three of the g1 climax here on block b and we're gonna be once again starting off with a non-g1 match here as we got ourselves a fatal four-way elimination match as we are going to be seeing star like kid of stardom roxanne of call natalia the wwe and dakota wheeler of call as well and of course joining with me he is the one and only Samurai. Mr. Samurai, but hey, how you doing, guys? <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, all right, all right, did you close the door? Is there any dogs this time? Eh. eh. Only one, but he's only one, but he's calm. Dude, he's calm. We're not supposed to be letting dogs in here. They're hey, gonna make a one, mess. Hey, yeah, he's he's cool. He's just chilling like right behind me, so we're good. <laughs> Always oh, bringing in strays. All right, let's go. Right, this match about to get started. We're going to be starting off with another non-G1 match. And we got ourselves a, a nice little fatal four-way with women's action. This should be a good one right here. Mm-hmm. As we've got Roxanne, Natalia, Starlight Kid, and Dakota Wheeler. Uh, I know you're at least familiar with three of the women in this match. Mm-hmm. Considering. Uh, Watch Raw. And I know, of, I know of Dakota from, from I believe EWF or yeah EWF. Roxanne, I've seen around. So like kid, I don't know at all. Uh, well, we'll see how this kid does in this match. As uh, I do believe this is a elimination style match. So once these ladies submit or are pinned, they have to leave the ring. Last one standing wins as Natalia trying to get a victory uh, using that abdominal stretch there. Uh, uh, trying to go from behind. Now, who do you think's got the best chance in this match? Honestly, I think it's up in the air. I would have to say Natalia, given that, that she's got the most experience. Oh, wait, Dakota with a Black Widow there, trying to make Starlight like Kid tap out. Anything could happen in this kind of match. Fatal 4-Way, anyone could team up. Just because, uh, you know, Roxanne and Dakota, you know, they're both from Call doesn't mean they're gonna team up here tonight. I'm sure they want to get a victory and try to get themselves closer because even though uh, UWA This is we're just kind of getting in the official starting of UWA and oh, what, what's this year? Natalia and Dakota with a double uh, V trigger there what a, what a what a bit of a tag team offense there an unexpected tag team offense on Starlight mm -hmm. Kid, but um but we already have a UWA Women's Championship. Of course, that's being currently held, I believe, by Sasha Banks. So, um, we got another double knee strike, this time by Call. The, th the call, uh, two girls from Call going, uh, teaming up. As now, Starlight Kid getting the best of the exchange of the strikes. Roxanne going up top, elbow drop to the back. These ladies are now splintered it up, taking it up uh, individual side of the ring. And we got a German suplex with the bridge and Natalia with a kick out. Natalia's, that was a close one. That was a two count right there. Now Falcon Arrow. Natalia switching her target, going to start like Kid. Oh, wait. Ooh. Dakota quickly changed her um, turn target when going after Natalia and twisting up the leg there. It would probably be a smart idea to do damage to Natalia's leg. She needs to hit the sharpshooter. As I say that, she locks it in on Dakota. Dakota's in trouble. But no, she's able to break that hold. Lots of, We've seen lots of people pat, uh, tap out to that maneuver. And oh wait, I think the referee got taken down. Our referee is down red on shoes. the Red Shoes is uh, hurt. He, he, we just started the show and he's already down on the ground. Flat. Already oh, wait. in pain. Oh, wait, we got a jackknife cover there. But able to kick out at one. Roxanne, we're already five minutes into this match. I mean, still able to kick out at one. Oh, so that kid broke up that pinfall for some reason. Swinging net breaker with a bridge. Oh, we got a submission hole and another uh, choke hole, but I think she got to the road. This is uh, just a, a mosh pit of a fight. These ladies are not giving each other much room. And Natalia looking to use that power there. But for some reason, Dakota just broke out the pinfall. I don't think these girls uh, realize this is the elimination matches. They're, they're breaking up pinfalls at times. Oh, we're going to find out, I guess. 
<laughs> Do you think that, what, is there any kind of strategy to uh, doing that? It, oh, Starlight Kid with the Sunset Flip Power Bomb to or the or the Red Light Driver, whatever you like to call it. Honestly, the only, the only strategy I can see for that is basically just just laying in the punishment. That's all I can see. I guess so. As Natalia was picked up, but. Dakota switched things around. Oh, what a butterfly suplex, Dakota. She seems to have a lot of attention on uh, Natalia. Every chance she gets, she kind of turns her attention. Oh, a drop kick now going for the cover of Roxanne, but get the two. You think Dakota may be trying to get a... Uh, you think if uh, any one of these girls could pin or submit Natalia, it would be a very big win for them? It could be, yeah. Most, big. Mostly as well. Big frog splash. <laughs> oh, fisherman suplex, but again, the breakup. Now Dakota going up top. Uh, do, you, do we usually see Dakota go high flying? Oh, not really. Oh, that just shows how uh, desperate uh, these ladies are getting it. Oh wait, Natalia tried to go for the sharpshooter, but Starlight Kid saved it, Dakota. And oh, poison Rana on Roxanne. Well, Roxanne, oh hey, going up top, elbow drop. Starlight like Kid, what is she planning on doing? Frog Splash, I don't even know who she hit. I think she hit Roxanne and Dakota at the same time. Oh no, yes. look at another double V trigger. Bro, the double V trigger, and immediately Natalia turning on the Dakota. There are no true allies in this kind of matchup. And now looking to go for a suplex. No, wait, oh, big power bomb. But I think Starlight like Kid accidentally kicked. Dakota breaking up the pinfall, and now Natalia with a sit-out power bomb of her own. One, two. Oh, it's Starlight Kid kicked out. Dang. Starlight Kid showing off some uh, impressive resiliency as she dikes down Roxanne with that Falcon Arrow. Now, oh, was looking for the Frost Splash, but Roxanne moved out the way, and oh, Roxanne right on top of Starlight Kid, just punching away at the back of her head. It's a legal way to make someone give up, I guess. It's not pretty, though. It's Dakota with the drop kick. Takes down Roxanne. And now, looking for the Northern Light suplex, but got taken down. Wait, Roxanne's in the sharpshooter. Oh, wait. Broke the hole and then locked in a Boston Crab on Roxanne. Starlight Kid wants to get the, get the submission hold. That's just a bad situation to be right there. You get locked in one submission hole just for someone to break it up and put one of their own in. And I'll take Roxanne depreciating that. She's taking the fight to the floor with Starlight Kid. But that, that back's got to be hurting. No, what was... I don't even know what we just saw at Dakota there. She just did like a verge of a normalized suplex and then floated to an arm bar. Have you... That's, that's, some, uh, that's something right there. Oh, yeah. These ladies showing off some new things. And now, Roxanne with the Falcon Arrow. Standing version. Brings her down. Picking her back up. Wait, no, oh, what a headbutt on Natalia. Switching target then. Oh, the Dakota just sent Starlight Kid into everybody. Knocking them all down. These ladies, so far, no pinfalls. And oh, Dakota saving Roxanne from a power bomb there. Double stomp to the back of Natalia. I think the, I think Dakota really does have a, a... It really is going after Natalia in this match. Well then. I wonder what this is all about. Now... Oh wait, Roxanne takes out Natalia. But Dakota with that Northern Light followed by the armbar. Looking to get the submission on Roxanne. Will she tap? No, she breaks the hold. Oh, try to go up on the shoulder. Broke that up. She, now all ladies are down. Natalia will try to get up, but she's dazed. 15 minutes into this match, these ladies are taking a lot out of each other. Yep. Hello. Hey, Byronite. As Roxanne's up on the top. Oh, there's the splash, but she's in the ropes. Russian leg sweep takes down Dakota. Now, big shot. To, oh, Natty by Nature, the discus clothesline. But Roxanne saving Dakota, looking for the double knee strike to the face. But immediately turning on each other. Iris Whip. What is Starlight Kid looking to go for? Nothing. As he, oh my, she gets get slammed high on the shoulders with that Mentaguchu driver. That was brutal right there. Yes. Oh. 
And now got that again with the uh, Domino Strat. Oh, Dakota the trouble. Sit out power bomb. One, two, three. And Dakota just got pinned. And the double, the bloody cross by Roxanne followed by the the up the uh, diving elbow drop. A lot of damage to the midsection there. Yeah, Dakota was so determined to try and take out Natalia. She, Natalia ended up taking her out. And oh, another high on the shoulder is Metsuguchi driver. Oh wait, come behind German suplex. Russian likes when Natalia's taking control of this match. And she's now got a sharpshooter on Roxanne. Will she tap out? Will she tap? No, she broke the hold. Well, wait, but immediately got caught by Starlight Kid. A dragon screw brings her down. And that lets her get be put back into another submission hold. But the rope break again. Starlight Kid took advantage. What is this luchador going to do? Nothing as she is taken down. And now, again, Natalia is determined. Roxanne might tap at this rate. No, saw the kid looking to take her down. Yeesh. Oh, what is this? Oh, twisting cutter. And again, another sharpshooter by Natalia. But again, the rope break. Natalia is determined to make people tap with the sharpshooter. Oh, saw the kid. Sunset flip, power bomb, but no, a kick to the back. I think Roxanne wants a piece of Natalia now. Oh, roll up here, roll up after taking down Roxanne. Two! No! Oh, Star the kick kicked out. Ooh, boy. Uh, Kai, I'll take over for a second. Uh, the problem is this, the screen's a bit behind the action, so. Yeah, you're stuck with me for a bit, one, two. Oh. Barely, people, oh, my. I'm on a little behind. Whoop. So I can't get up. Nope, nope. Lock up and. Ah, oh, come on, Roxanne. <laughs> so I get to the top and got apparently going for the cover, but nope. Yeah, everybody making everybody suffer right now. Yeah. Power bomb. One, two. Nope. Yeah. Got a kid, some. I'm Ooh. back, and it looks like we got blood. Oh, Natalia, was she must have, did she, I think she, I just saw, did she tap out to the sharpshooter? I have no clue, because I, again, like I, I told you my monitor is right behind. Oh, yeah, apologies for that, but, oh, wait, and Roxanne with another submission hold, and making Starlight Kid tap out, Roxanne wins this match. Damn. 23 minutes using submission holds. To defeat her last two opponents, kind of uh, I guess you can kind of call that ironic. Yeah, oh no, it's a half bot. I'm getting told now, a uh, half Boston crab, by mm. uh, was used by Roxanne to get the victory against both Natalia and Starlight Kid. But you still gotta give it to her. That's kind of uh, ironic there. Natalia was so determined to try and make everyone else tap out with that sharpshooter. In the end, she was the one that tapped out to a Boston, a, uh, a single-legged Boston crab. So mm -hmm. that's that's definitely that tells a story there. We're gonna be moving on here though, as we got ourselves G1 action time. We got ourselves some good matches, don't we? Oh yeah. As we are on the Which... B block. Yeah, finally I got the finally the uh, the interns gave me the right the right notes. Oh, finally! All right, well, well, why don't you run down what matches we're gonna be seeing tonight? We have Evil versus Rich Swan, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Pac, and Hunter Quinn takes on Tetsuya Naito. Yes, yeah, there's some good matches. We're gonna be starting off with Evil versus Rick Swan. Now, if we can look at the rankings right now, Evil currently with no points, so he definitely needs a victory here tonight. While uh, Rick Swan 
has five points, so he has the ability to go and tie up with Johnny Gargano. So definitely a, a win that both of these guys would need. I mean, if Evil wins, we just get another person that adds to the tie. If Rick wins, he leaves the five-way ties and joins up with Johnny Gargano to tie for first. So we'll see how this match goes, right? Oh, yeah. Let's go for it. It is New Japan Wrestling versus Impact Wrestling. Here we go. I gotta say, this should be definitely be a good one. I mean, Evil, uh, former double champion uh, with the uh, IWGP Inter uh, Intercontinental Championship and heavyweight champion Rick Swan, former X Division champion, also former Cruiserweight champion of WWE, and now the current Impact World Champion. Have to face off I against I think against uh. Well, Kenny Omega and the both the Good Brothers are uh, next week. I'm not the next week. at hard to kill. Oh uh, yes, and I mean that's the closest thing you get to dealing with Bullet Club. I mean, I mean they're pretty much the closest. They're, they're the way they're at it. They're pretty much saying that they're already back. They're going back to the Bullet Club ways. As Rick Swan makes his way to the ring, it should definitely be a good one. Rick Swan, uh, gonna be a classic. Uh, a context of strength versus speed, but you know, I never, never doubt uh, evil. He might have that strength, but he's, he's, he, you know, he's got the, he's very smart and he is fast. He knows how to change his positioning quite quickly. We've seen it, like especially when he likes to hit that lariat out of nowhere. So uh, Rich One's definitely gonna have a challenge tonight. This is not just any powerful enemy like when he fought against Luther. This won't be a, this will be an opponent who could pr maybe somewhat keep up with him. Of course, we also know Evil had no problem take cutting corners, using chairs, if need be. So, I gotta think, but, I mean, either way, I mean, we know how Rick Swan is. He doesn't give up easy, so what do you think Evil's gonna have to do to get this victory? Kyle? What? I was saying, what do you think Evil's gotta do to get a victory tonight? Well, like I said, probably they just got the corners because I'm. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I'm just yeah, gonna, I'm just are gonna... you trying to say you don't think Evil can beat Rick Swan clean? Uh, clean. You better be careful. He might come over here and uh, push someone to the uh, freaking the guardrail and push our table over. He's been doing that a lot. I've been seeing over in New Japan with the freaking bell keeper. A... I'm just glad there's more steel chairs nearby us. Cause... Sure we're gonna need him if he does come over this way. Oh yeah, the evil raking the eyes with the with the ropes there, and then following up with a choke. Uh, Red Shoe's been dealing with evil a lot, so he knows the all the all the tricks that evil likes to employ. But still, doesn't stop the fact that he knows how to do them without Red Shoe's seeing it, or without the uh, Red Shoe's. Well, <laughs> disqualify him for the rules. Right, <laughs> and now. Oh, again, raking the eyes on the ropes. Now that's not gonna pin your opponent, is it? But it's definitely gonna irritate them. It's gonna put. It's gonna make their eyes water. I would imagine, right? Yeah. And that's gonna make. And for a high flyer, someone who's fast paced, you don't want your you know your vision to be obscured. And oh, what a belly the belly by Rick Swan because if you're you can't see, I mean those high risk maneuvers become even more high risk, wouldn't it? Yeah. As now. These two are gonna go back and forth with the strikes. Rick Swan falling first. Evil off the ropes and a senton across the chest. Evil is not the lightest. And oh, Rick Swan tried to count, uh, try to come back with a Hurricane Rana, but got caught with a power bomb. That there's that power, but the, the second opportunity, the second try, he was able to get it, but it wasn't able to follow up with a ground move and able to hit that suplex there. Oh, try to go for a big kick. Evil's gonna have to be careful. Rick Swan has been pretty deadly with those kicks as of recently. Even been winning some matches. And now, oh, submission, uh, a whole working hold here, trying to do some damage to the neck. Irish whip, referee needs to move out the way. And oh, what a bulldog. Is now being picked up. And ooh, driving the face right into the knee, trying to go for a cover. One, two, oh, no, not even a two count. Very close, though. 
It shows that Rick Swan's got a lot of in the tank. And Evil's gonna have to do a lot more as he hits that big vertical suplex. And now gonna no, I thought he was gonna go for a cover instead, picked him back up, but Evil took back over. A hard punch in the midsection. Evil keeps missing those thrust kicks. We keep seeing him try to go for it. Either he's just too slow to hit him on Rick Swan or Rick's just got him scouted. As now Looking for the drop toe hold. Rick Swan up top. Brock splash to the back. Yeesh. Now that's not gonna. I don't. I don't. Now question. What's the point of doing uh, one of those maneuvers to someone's back? Does it do more damage? Uh, it, does it just you know set them up for something? What what what, what would you say the point is? Mostly well, probably just inflict more damage and possibly you know make it a little harder for someone to do like a suplex or something. And oh, Rick Swan so with the Hurricane Rana got him rolled up for a cover. Off the, the Hurricane Rana off the top rope, nearly getting the victory there. Tried to go for the discus for him, missed that. And oh, what a <laughs> discus kick. And Rick Swan going to take the time to dance. Man is always I mean, in a you good mood. <laughs> you got the time, do it. Oh, big Lariat there trying to take off the head of Rick Swan. Evil with the throat slash, but Rick Swan turned things around, but back elbow by Evil. These two just countering for counters. Rick Swan off the top, back, uh, back elbow to the back. Just driving the uh, the elbow, trying to go for the head, but missed it. But able to pick him up with a suplex. Evil actually going to the top. Elbow drop by Evil. Wait, going back up to the top, another elbow drop by Evil. Back to back elbow drop, but Evil got caught, Poison Rana, and now Rick Swan said no. I think he's gonna look for that running double Meteora. One, two, and oh, Evil kick out the count of two. That Meteora is a dangerous maneuver we've seen other wrestlers utilize. Now what's this? Oh, that's, that's Rick Swan's version of the Emerald Flosion. The evil just used on him. Yeesh. Evil stealing Rick Swan's move. And oh, I don't think he, uh, Rick Swan appreciated it. The cross legged roll up nearly gets the victory. We've seen Rick Swan really utilize these different variations of roll ups using Hurricane Rana's uh, to try and get victories. And now just kicking away at uh, Evil. I think he's trying to push him into the corner, but Evil able to throw him to the outside. You're gonna use some kicks and uh, oh, try to maybe go for a German on the outside. Rick not gonna let it happen. Oh, and just setting him hard into the barricade. And now a disc is formed, but Rick able to duck it and get back in the ring. Darn it, Ruffin Thrust kick, missing it. Evil sending him into the corner. Might be thinking to set him up on the top. No, again, gonna rake out the eyes. It's not gonna help him do any damage for the for his bigger maneuvers, but it's gonna make things hard for Rick. But Rick fights back with a kick going up and down with that elbow drop. Evil showing that he, as always, has no problem cutting corners, but he's able to connect with that fisherman buster. One, two, and oh, that was enough. Well, damn. That fisherman buster, there must have been more damage done to Rick than we thought, as the fisherman buster was just enough to put Rick Swan away and get that victory. Not what I expected at all. I don't think any. I don't think anyone of us expected that. Nope. Now that now that is, uh, asks the question, I mean, is Rick Swan injured? Maybe was more damage done in that match than we thought? Uh, I don't know. Maybe all the maybe all the choking and grabbing at the throat was really 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 had done some damage to the neck, and that's what maybe. Uh, Gave the the maximum damage for that fisherman buster. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But in the end, Rick Swan uh get got the loss. Evil gets the first five points. We're gonna moving on as it's gonna be Shinsuke Nakamura versus Pac. This should be a good one. I don't think it's ever clashed before. Alan. I don't. I, I don't it's believe so scary, either. Right? Uh, I can't really remember myself. Once again, we got another match where Shinsuke, he doesn't got any points. Pack, he's got five. He's got an opportunity to try and tie up with Johnny Gargano. 
I mean, this is could be a this can be a good thing for Brock. I mean, he started off the tournament with a loss, made up with a win. Can he continue his winning re Can he continue his winning ways, or are we gonna see uh, well, what we saw last match? You know, the guy who has no points get getting the victory. We're about oh. to find out. Yes, we are. As we saw last time, we saw Shinsuke was in our last uh, episode of um, the episode two of Block B, where we saw him go up against Jay Jones, and Jay Jones was able to pick up the victory. The back and forth match actually ended a lot quicker than the, neither one of us thought it was. As Shinsuke, we know Shinsuke is an amazing wrestler. I uh, had many great moments here in Japan, so to come back to just you know lose so quickly. Uh, I mean, I guess he probably doesn't do much for the King of Strong Style's confidence. Nope. But of course, comes out like the artist he is, posing and everything else like that. But he's going up against probably one of the more brutal m members we have in this uh, tournament. Pac, this man has is just very dangerous. Another guy I would call very much a hybrid wrestler despite his size. He's got that power. He loves to go for submissions. He's very, very athletic despite how muscular he is. He is just an all-around great wrestler. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I got to think. I mean, what does... I mean, I, can, I the one thing that Shinsuke does have, I think, the, like, over Pac is the fact that I think Shinsuke is a much better striker. So no, if if uh, if Shinsuke, do you think could keep down? Also, I mean, of course, Shinsuke also goes for submissions as well. We just saw right there with that with that big takedown into the armbar. But I think if Shinsuke can keep Pac uh, uh, at a slower pace, keep him close, and hit him with those kicks and those strikes, I think he could very much win this match. Of course, if Pac is allowed to exact his will, keep things fast-paced, or just break down Shinsuke, it will go, I think, much more in uh, Pac's uh, favor as he gets the better with that big uppercut drop in Shinsuke. Now, immediately locking in a guillotine here, dropping him down. But Pac was able to break the hole. Now, Roman knuckle lock brings down Shinsuke. Big shot to the uh, face there with that forearm. These two just standing off right now. And a shot to the back. Now I can see this match going for quite some time. I don't see either one of these two giving up very easily. But these guys, they both have a lot of accomplishments. I would, um, I'm not too familiar with all of Pac's accomplishments, but I know he's a former NXT champion. I know he won the Cruiserweight Championship. He's been doing quite well on, uh, on AEW. Uh, do you know mm -hmm. any of uh, any of other Pox accomplishments? I'm sure he's got more. Cruiserweight champion over in WWE when, it was, when that was actually an accomplishment. Well, uh, I did say that, but yes, he was the Cruiserweight champion. Called himself the king of the Cruiserweights. I guess here he would be the king of the junior heavyweights. If you he, actually tried to call himself that. Uh, but... I think he prefers to go by the bastard. Yeah. Probably. Not a very nice name to call yourself, is it? Not really, but at the same time, Pac's give it his not... attitude, I think it makes sense. And he's not very a nice guy. You know, a big knee to the back of the head. And Pac is really uh, uh, trying to lay it down on Shinsuke, but Shinsuke doing well to keep up and fight back. So far, I don't think really anyone has taken advantage in this match. Both have hit some decent moves, but nothing too severe. Of course, uh, Shinsuke has tried to go for some uh, sub early submission, but wasn't able to lock him in for long. As he drops Pac down face first. And now big take down there. But Pac's got to be very careful of being set up for that Bombaye or the Kinshaska, whatever you like to call it. And now big disc is kicked there. Setting him up. Oh, and off the ropes. Here comes Pac. What a drop kick right across the face. Now, ooh, be setting him into the corner. Kick to the midsection. And now just knees to the midsection. Trying to take away that airflow. And oh, a kick to the back of the knee. That's going to do some damage. That's a little dirty there. No, and now got that submission hole. But Pac's hand is under the ropes. 
And I, I think well, we saw a lot of submissions coming out of Shinsuke in the uh, in the match against Jay Jones. So I, I'm taking a guess that maybe uh, Shinsuke isn't focused on trying to maybe knock people out. Oh, there's the knee, running knee strike. But it doesn't go for a cover. Pac was able to uh, able to get back up to his feet. I was trying to say that maybe uh, Shinsuke isn't worried about knocking people out. Maybe he's worried about maybe making them tap. Mm-hmm. But as yet to be seen, he hasn't been able to get the victory yet. This is only his second match. It's Pac pulling him away from the ropes. And a big thrust kick to the back doesn't drop Shinsuke. And now picking him up and dropping him down face first. And now what is what is going for? Going off the ropes. Another flying knee. But Pac again fighting his way up to his feet. Refusing to stay down for Shinsuke. He knows if he stays down too long, Shinsuke will set up for that cut. For that bump by Ye, Kinshasa, whatever you like to call it. I guess since we're in Japan, it's the bump by Ye, isn't it? I would think so, yeah. And now he pulls him away from the road. Ooh, knee right to the midsection. Again, a knee to the midsection. And a shot to the head. Ooh, kick to the midsection. And a big kick. Dropping down. Fuck. And now, what is Shinsuke looking for? No, wait. Got, blocks that, blocks that as well. These two got each other scouted. Big spinning kick. Gonna go off the road. Drop kick. Both men are down for a moment, but they both make it back up to their feet. Joe and Pac with the German. He's got the bridge. Two. And he's closer to the ro uh, rope. He would have gotten the rope breaks. Oh, wait. Big roll up there, but they're on the outside. Of course, can't get that, can't get that pinfall. On the outside, as the fight continues on the outside, big takedown on the floor. Pac, gotta uh, be careful. He doesn't want to get counted out. As uh, no way, Shinsuke, he's got the arm bar. We're at, we're at foot 15. But Pac able to break the hole and get back in the ring. That, it looked like Shinsuke might have been thinking of a uh, ooh, big German suplex, but way too close to the road for the bridge. As now, big uppercut and a punch. These two are going to go back and forth. As no Pac. Looking for a big super kick, but Shinsuke's back up and a super kick of his own. These two trading kicks, trading strikes. As we have hit, we're with 12 minutes and oh, Pog driving Shinsuke down on the top of his shoulders with that Hurricane Rana, and now picking him back up. He's dazed. He's confused. And oh, a DDT. And now what is Pac looking for? Might be thinking Meteor. No, wait. Oh, there's the black. I believe that's called Black Magic. That heel kick to the back of the head. And now he's got the submission hold in. That signature ring of Saturn's. But K was able to break the hold. I don't know how he was able to do that. After taking that kick to the back of the neck like that. But Shinsuke using his height. Putting Pac on the top rope. Looking for a superplex. Superplex connecting. Both men are down. Both men are taking big hits at this point. They are taking a lot of damage. Oh, both try to go for kicks. Both missing. They're both breathing hard. No, wait. Come from behind. Back elbow. Days in Pac. Here comes Pac. Hurricane Rana taking down Shinsuke. Turning him around. Might be digging him again. Yes, he is. Ring of Saturn. He's got it locked in. Will we see a tap out? Will he tap? No. He was able to break the hold again. Shinsuke going up top. And a diving knee. I don't think Shinsuke goes to the top rope that often, does he? I've never seen him do it, but... Oh, wait, Bombaye! The drop kick to the knee fall by the Bombaye, but he was way too close to the ropes. As you were saying, he, he, you've never seen him do it? Nope. Oh, that just shows that Shinsuke might be desperate. And a... Oh, a diving knee from the top rope! Cover! One! Two! Oh, Hawk kicks out. It's almost like a diving bomb by A. Hawk is... Shinsuke's getting creative. He's getting desperate. He wants to win this match. As now Hawk again setting him up. And it's there at the basement drop kick. He's already hit two big bomb by A's. One from a, 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 a kneeling position. And now and then a second from a, a, from a diving position. Uh, Irish Whip setting him into the corner. Now... Setting him up into the tree of woes and now just targeting the knees with the elbow uh, with these forearm attacks. Oh, trying to go for, I don't know what he was trying to go for, but he fell. Went for the kick, missed that, got a little caught Pac, shot to the back, and he's yelling for him to come on. This is in a brutal 
back and forth match again setting him up for another basement drop kick both men are down we are nearing 20 minutes of this match we are getting into those what you call uh those championship minutes we're getting very close to that when like the Things are just getting desperate for these guys. As a base, as a big missile drop kick by Pack, and now the Black Arrow to the back, the Black Arrow to the back, and so and he usually likes the combo with the submission hole, but instead goes for the cover too. But Shinsuke kicked out. You think maybe he should have went for the hold? Maybe, maybe. And now Shinsuke tried to go for that. Oh, and made another one. The DDT followed by the, another Black Arrow. But this time Shinsuke was in the road. And now he's got the guillotine. But I think he's too. But Pac was able to scoot himself into the ropes. And get the rope break. Things are really are getting desperate. Big kick. He is, he is getting close. We already seen both men hit their best moves pretty much twice. And neither were able to put the other away. He's yelling for it, super kick! And now looking to bring him up, and no way, Pac countered. Irish whip off the ropes. Tell the world DDT dropping Pac. Drop, I mean, dropping Shinsuke. You know, Shinsuke, oh wait, able to uh, counter the kick up on the shoulders. There's the landslide! But I think he's too close to the ropes, that landslide, that big Samoan driver. Just too close to the rope, and oh, good Park again driving him on the top of his shoulders with that Hurricane Rana. And oh, a drop kick to the knee. Wait, what's this? Baba Yay by Park. Baba Yay by Park. Doesn't go for the cover though. But he just stole his, own, his opponent's move. And now bringing him back up. Might be thinking German suplex to end this. Oh, wait. Shinsuke able to get the arm bar. And Pock tap. Pock tap. Shinsuke able to pick up the victory by submission. Damn. What a back and forth battle that was. 21 minutes and 17 seconds. Of pure action, the flying cross arm breaker. Give it to I gotta give it. I gotta wonder though if Pac. I don't know if Pac could tell how close he was to the road, or maybe I, I mean, he might not have been able to get through. Shinsuke body was kind of blocking the road, so I'm not sure if uh, Pac would have been even able to get the rope breaks. And I wonder if that's why he just went for the went for the tap. Maybe he thought he couldn't make it, despite how close he was. Probably. Uh, a disappointment for Pac as he had again we see an opportunity for an individual to tie with Johnny Gargano and the one who has no points just you know takes that away so at this point Johnny Gargano still remains you know on the top of the spot and the next and the next show we'll see him and the next match we'll see him uh, Johnny Gargano actually in our next a block B we'll see him have another match so we'll see if he can uh, further his position as the number one spot but we're gonna be moving on here we got Hunter Quinn taking on Tessia Naito this should be a good one. Oh yeah now Naito uh, I believe one of the few who uh, I think actually needs a victory I think both of these men are actually ranked with five points. Uh, no, actually, no. Naito is one of the only last two who don't have a point. Naito did lose in his very first match against Gargano. So he needs this. So once again, Naito has no points. And I mean, with the way this, this night has been going, the one with no points seems to get the victory over the one that does have points. So, yeah, I mean, are you, you think that we're going to see, you know, the same thing happen? Maybe. Hunter, I mean, Hunter Quinn, it might not come so easy. Well, man, we'll definitely have to see. This match about to get started. Naito looking to t uh, make up for his first match here in the G1 where he lost to Johnny Gargano by, I believe it was submission. And I think Naito, I Gargano think if I was by double Gargano escape, I think. Yes, it was, he would not let go. He wanted to get that old. That he wanted to prove he could be Naito. As here we come, here comes the double champion himself of the uh, UW, the um, the IWGP 
uh, heavyweight and intercontinental champion. Takes a lot to hold two belts. Mm -hmm. And now here comes the psycho killer himself, Hunter Quinn, the man who he might believe is magic. I mean, where else did he get those steel chairs from? I think you're tossing them to him. What? How am I the one tossing it to him? I don't know. Maybe you, you, you're just really quick. Um, I'm not that I'm not that good. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. This mask gets on the way. Uh, these two going to go back and forth. I believe Hunter does have a bit of a size advantage over Naito. But of course, we've seen Naito I and mean, he fight. He's been able to fight people bigger than him. And oh wait, countered that uh, guard position and then turned it into a uh, jackknife cover there. He's now bringing them down. We usually see that uh, Hunter likes to put himself in that position where he has he put himself on his back on purpose so that he can follow it up with a uh, where he can turn his opponent around into a cover actually to surprise them. Uh, and it, it, it works. He almost works every time. But I think Naito must have had that scouted. And oh wait. Naito looking, uh, might be in trouble here. Swinging. STO put it completely got up. Maybe I think blocked it. I think he might have put his hands back. Uh, his other hand. And was able to somewhat uh, soften the blow. Now Irish whip. But oh wait. Stops himself there. Now what do you think Hunter is going to have to be careful of in this match when it comes to Naito? For Hunter, you said? Yeah, what, is, what do you think Hunter has to be careful of in this match? Honestly, I just probably want to say just... Is Naito striking? Oh, with Naito trying to get a submission holding on the outside. Can't win out there, but you can do the damage. As now, we're going to hit that 10 count. We're getting close. We don't want a double count out to happen. That would not be good. Hunter, I mean, would get two points and would give him... Uh, Seven points would make things interesting as Naito got a Naito got a chair and he's using it against Hunter. He just hit it Hunter with the chair, he hit him again. He's gotta put that chair <laughs> he's down. Like, he's like, You like chairs, huh? Dunk. Uh apparently Naito looking to bring in the the, the heavy looking to go ahead and bring in the chair. For four or uh for Hunter. I guess maybe he saw Hunter's match. And know, knows that the the chair is going to be used anyway. He might as well be the first one to do it. And now gets oh, a submission yeah. hold in. Trying to make Hunter tap out. Will he do so? Will we see Hunter tap? Uh, what? Nothing. Just... Uh, this match is going pretty back and forth. And I think Hunter was trying to go for a pile driver there, but Naito was able to counter that. Woo! <laughs> this match is really going back and forth. It's now Hunter looking for it again, driving down Naito. But again, Naito, I think, might have countered it as he got up immediately and just slammed Hunter. Down on the ground. And again, looking to lock in this submission hold. And now these two gotta be careful. They're on the outside. Hunter looking for that swing STO on the floor. Will they get back in time? They do. Naito tried to go for something there, but got a. Uh, Stopped and now Naito off the road, drop kick to the back of the legs. That's gonna do some damage. Yeesh. We've been seeing Naito go for the uh, submission hold uh, with the with the leg, but though this time he's got a lot version of an arm bar here. I don't know what kind of hold to call this. Doesn't look comfortable, but uh, Hunter was able to find a way out of it. And now Hunter off the top with the frog splash. And now away Hunter looking for a running knee, a pump by A. And now with the jackknife cover, too. Oh, it nearly put Naito away. And now away, Dustino! Going for the cover. One, two, 
Oh, I kicked out only at two. Is that just showing? I'm mean, Nido nearly got pinned. And oh, there's that lifted uh, double arm DDT. And now going in for the submission. Look at the end. It will Nido tap? We've seen him tap once. Will he tap again? No, he breaks the hold. Big farm shot takes him down. And what's this? Rolling him up. Got him all stacked up on the shoulders. Two. And oh, wait, there it is. Three. Again, another Damn. quick loss for Naito. Damn. What is going on with Tessia Naito? He's taking them L's. Nah, not only is he taking them L's, but he's just not really getting anywhere. Oh, Lord. Uh, with that being said, we're going to... I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Oda Block B. We will see y'all next time. Bye bye.